So hello everyone. Um, in conjunction with International Women's Day yesterday, uh, where we actually celebrated first our achievements and also raising the visibility of women's rights, we, the vocals, actually decided to host like an informal girl talk today. And if you actually look into our chat channel, right, there's actually a couple of boys who wanted to dress up and actually join us today. But we told them no, definitely. Um, but one of them did say that they actually own a dress. So we're not going to go into that, but um, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, which is a veteran in the innovation and technology industry, Karen, uh, which is also the head of iLabs Foundry, one of the three agile teams under Foundry iLabs. So what she mainly does is to bridge the gap between the academia and also the industry. And she always likes to say that she does speak three different languages which is they connect the students, researchers, and also the industry partners. So I'll let Karen take it from here. So Karen, maybe you can start talking about yourself and also how you come into the industry. Wow, thanks, um, Eileen. And uh, I seriously got a little bit scared when she used the word veteran, right? As it looks like I'm really in this field for like 30, 40 years. And she really made me feel like I'm an old auntie when speaking to the young girls. Uh, well, thanks for um, turning on your camera, Shin Face. Um, it's really good to see everyone's, you know. Um, I heard from Jam that this is going to be very informal. So uh, do jump in and stop me asking questions of what, um, if you have anything that you want to ask. I do not want to share so much about my career, but perhaps uh, maybe from a, a very women's perspective, like, you know, uh, what, if you are curious to understand what, uh, maybe you have uh, questions like in your careers and you, you have a lot of um, question marks on you, what you will be going through. I will be happy to share my experience um, and also to hear from you if you have um, any things that you want to ask. But basically, um, I'm a microbiologist, uh, which means uh, I, I used to joke around with people, I can see what you can't see. And those things, it's basically what you can't see with your naked eyes. And when I introduced my, on what I study in uh, UM last time, a lot of people don't, thought I'm a gold busters, but actually I studied a lot of viruses. And what is happening right now, uh, the COVID-19, it's not uh, something strange to me. But interestingly, I, um, when I started my career, I didn't continue working in the lab as a microbiologist studying the virus or bacteria. In fact, I, I went into a, a healthcare company at uh, a German-based startups. And um, I started my career as a very hardcore scientist. You know, those people that you see from the universities um, looking into uh, the different formulas that um, help women to lose weight, um, pretty much to um, use the natural fibers. Um, and then we came up with several um, um, drugs formulations. And I think I, I spent about six years in the lab, very hardcore chasing patterns um, and then sell our IP to other big pharma companies. So a lot of transactions going, which means we come up with something, a new inventions, and then in returns, we pitch it to the pharma company um, and spend a lot of time traveling across the world, particularly in China, um, also in Germans, um, in Europe, dealing a lot with the men's uh, for a very young graduates. And you probably see um, it's a very unique experience for a young, um, female uh, graduates that time. And in 2014, so we managed to also, um, we got like about Euro 140 million, lots of money, uh, because whatever that we have generated in the company, we sold it out to a, a company in Europe and they got the exclusive rights, uh, which means we, we can't sell this to other people already. And I was thinking, what should we do with the fund, right? <laughs> so much money, but in the company itself, we have nothing to sell anymore. So we decided, um, so I, I told my boss, hey, can I stop working in the R&D and can you put me, um, no, that, that happened actually in 2012 when we are negotiating the new. So I was, instead of like R&D, I moved to uh, marketing and also business developments to help to penetrate the markets. And in 2014, we got that money in. And 
again, we, we don't have much to sell. And then that time we decided to sell our corporate ventures and start um, dealing with a lot of startups in the healthcare industry and also the university to see, to sniff for, you know, like a little puppy walking across the world, right? You know, to sniff for new innovations. What can we bring back to the company from the university? We package, we develop and put it back in the markets. But we also do a lot of investment into the early stage startups, um, especially those had, um, you know, um, for example, that probability in Yakuts, a lot of people are using um, to reduce hypertension or even um, the, the hybrid cholesterol or even weight loss. So that time I spent a lot of time um, making investment into the startups and um, um, after about four years uh, in 2018, uh, I joined Sunway Innovation Labs. And right now what I'm doing, right, it's um, quite fun. Um, I work with the students to really turn their idea into a real startups. I uh, work with the researchers to help to commercialize their outcome, uh, make myself the yes, ambassador or the salesman. And then um, I also work with a lot of industry to uh, pull in their business challenges back into the campus and see, um, I always ask students, can you do that or not? Can you come up with the solutions for the industry or not? And we'll see a lot of beautiful story, right? Students work with the industry when they are studying as part-time and eventually they get a job because they know each other when they are studying. And we also pull a lot of problem statements back to the campus for the researchers to uh, work, um, to make sure that they are more connected with the real world. And this is about me. Um, I, I used to joke around. I'm a full-time Sunway employee and a part-time mother of two kids. And when I go home, I used to reach home around like eight, nine o'clock. And it's like a party, right? And uh, I have my two young kids pulling my left and right hands and yelling, shouting, and my son is entering primary one. Um, so um, I struggle. I, I never admit that I don't struggle. I'm struggling right now. Um, I have not much time, but um, at least I love what I'm doing. So this is probably something that uh, I want to share with you about myself, and I would be happy to also hear from you. Uh, good to have all the ladies here because you probably think that uh, you also see that when you speak the same topic to a guys, right? They are how guys the brain works is very. Is you can imagine you have ten boxes. And guys will focus on one box. But as a female, we are very good in connecting all the boxes. Open up all the boxes, we connect, and then we pull all the content of the 10 boxes into a plate, and then we'll figure out. So it's, it's getting complicated now. And then um, that's how women think. And it, it's really good to uh, speak to everyone today and to see, you know, are you that kind of like one box people, or are you that kind of like, um, people who pull everything out from the 10 boxes and start digging out the, the one of the coins that you have been um, throwing in one of the box. So yeah, that's um. let me know uh, what, if you have any uh, things that you want to know from me, I'm happy to share. Yanmin, you look like you're about to say something. Yes, uh, in fact, I really have a question over here. So uh, in the past few years, uh, there is a lot of innovation going on, like camp competition, and then people have been coming out with new gadget technology, be it like prototype, like, but it's really uh, super impressive, super smart. But I don't know if this is a trend or not, uh, something about patents. So Malaysians, we are very smart in creating new things, innovate and everything. But um, there is, to, to what I see is that uh, lesser people patent their innovations Hence, uh, there is a uh, copy and, uh, you know, copy and reuse other people's idea all over. So, was wondering for your end, right? Because um, uh, these innovation things, how, how is it in Malaysia right now? Like, is the is the patents um improving? Like, people are starting to realize to you know to get patents so that your idea also won't get copied or um actually, Malaysians they doesn't really matter. They don't they don't really mind. Like, yeah. I think uh, it really depends on how much, um, um, how what is the important and where you are working, right? If you are working in university per se, um, patents is definitely a big topic because the government right now are using patents to judge the ranking. So the more patents you have, the, more, the higher ranking it goes. Um, 
But the question is, filing a patent is very expensive. If you file the patent, you can only file in country specific. If you start filing a patent in Malaysia, it takes 20,000 ringgit. And after that, let's say if you want to enter the key markets, you have to really ask yourself which market I want to go. Um, key markets like UK, Europe, um, chi um, China, or even you know other uh, other countries, essential ones that you want to launch a product. If essentially you have to stand by two hundred thousand to file patents, and you often have to ask yourself: Do is your inventions worth the value or not? If you don't worth the value, you can have other options. But more importantly, patent only works for compositions like a, like um, you know this 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 phone that you pay so much money. There are like thirty over patents inside, and it explains why it's so expensive. And these are the uh, compositions to make like um, for example, what you call that um, um, the plastic compositions here. Yeah? That can be a patent. The paper compositions can be a patent. Um, if, we, if we were to take out this phone, the chips inside can be a patent. Um, but really, what worth the price is this apple as a copyright. And the smell, the special smell that, um, you know, when you go to the flip flop shop, you have this special coconut smell. It's also a copyright. And you are talking about software, computer software. Computer software can be a copyright. So you really need to understand what sort of things that you have and how you want to protect your inventions. But more importantly, also ask yourself, what is the commercial value? KFC doesn't have patents or um, copyrights. They have a secret recipes that, which is not known to anyone. So you, to me, it's, it's important. Um, but do you want to file for the IP just because uh, for the sake of getting a patent, mm. you, you should see the commercial value first and whether or not the return of investment is justifiable. If your business worth 20,000 and then you're filing a patent of 200,000, that's definitely a no-no to go. So there's a lot of things that you probably want to consider um, when talking about IP. What, what happened if... Uh... You know, at this uh, current state, um, the person's innovation might not be value to commercial, but like a few years later, then uh, this thing suddenly blooms and uh, it was um, too late to patent because people has already known it, uh, do it. And then, yeah, is it too late for the person? You know what? Um, one of my patents, right? I found the Malaysian patent in 20, uh, 2012 and it's only available in the markets. Um, in 2020 January, which is last year. And it take eight years, uh, coming up with an idea, following a patent is like super easy, but it take eight years to make sure that it's commercially viable um, to go through the registration process. But the good thing is about patents, for example, copyright, once you file, right, you prevent people from filing the same thing. Mm. So whoever who file first, then you are the, you, you claim the priorities. Um, it's always going back to questions, what exactly you have in your plates? Idea are super cheap. Fouling patents and everything are expensive. Idea is like, eh. And that's, I mean, a lot of people, a lot of time people say, okay, patent give you 20 years of to monopoly the markets. Um, yeah, for example, drugs, um, compositions is really worth the value. But if you're talking about software, if you're working on coding, you know, all this software, like after tomorrow and tomorrow, it come up with a new version, new version, and after a new versions, do you want to file for that or for what? <laughs> so you have to really understand for what. And a lot of people say, okay, I, I, I have my software, I file copyrights, but then for what, right? It, it's like, you know, you keep renew and update every day. Do you really need that or not? Pro provided you have something that is super proprietary, then it's worth filing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there any, any questions from any, and I'm just curious, like, you know, um, what have you been through uh, for the past three weeks in the, the online piscine and uh, how are you um, taking that? Hell, hell week, hell month. <laughs> They're actually currently in their day 23 and it's going to come to an end soon on Friday. So there's only like a handful of females here. It's actually 10 of us. But only eight of them made it today because Audrey is doing her exam. Yeah. 
And what do you think? Um, um, I, I also heard from Jeff that you have a lot of guys in the piscine, right? And this is probably something that you will be facing in the future, especially in the technical field. We have a lot of guys. And do you feel, um, I mean, I just want to gauge your perspective um, when you're working together with the guys and how, how do you feel about that, especially in this uh, coding, uh, in the world of coding or world of computer? Uh, maybe I share my experience. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> because I actually went for internship as an IT student. So yeah, of course, in my department, it's like all oh, guys. And I feel very, very lonely, can say so. Because, you know, guys, they won't like uh, support you. They won't like uh, help you. Uh. They, they will only help you when you ask for help. They, they won't like, uh, how to say, uh, they won't offer help to you if you didn't like say anything and then I think because I was the only uh, girl in the IT department back in my intern days <laughs> so I think uh, I hope that I can see more like women in the tech industry and also I would like to ask Karen uh, what is the most challenging part for you as a woman in like in this tech industry I think you are working in like a uh, biology industry, right? You say it's like, I think for biology also mostly like scientists are mostly guys, I think. Well, in fact, I spend most of my time with the uh, uh, the male entrepreneurs. Oh yeah. Uh, it's it's of course when I was young, right? I always have these questions of how can how can I make myself look more mature especially dealing in the business world because you can imagine that when you graduate you just graduated you look like a young chiku people used to call that and you always think like, okay how, how can i make myself look younger uh, looks more mature so that i can give more credibilities uh, to people as, and uh, to also try to blend in very hard to the guys world to really understand what they are trying to say and to be honest to be honest I, I found it very uh, not being myself. It's very uh, big because I constantly have to force myself to uh, be part of their gang, right? Be their, be their bro uh, because you are so lonely being one of the female. But I also don't rule out the fact that a lot of, um, we are male and females. We have this chemistry in between. And uh, we just have to know, you know, being a bro is bro, but how to protect ourselves is also equally important. And I, to me, it's, I think it's important that you can blend into the circle, but you should not um, change your own, um, you, you still have to be your own self and be very genuine to, to yourself. Because eventually, what would happen next time? Uh, these people will just come and go. You do not want to like you know force yourself to change to behave like another people just because you want to blend into the guy circle. Um, be confident on who you are, what you can deliver, um, and that will, it it take a little bit more time, but the effect will be uh, more substantial rather than you force yourself to blend into their cycle, speak their own language, and these people come and go and eventually. Um, you know, the, the effect is not substantial or not sustainable. So I, I will definitely um, encourage you all to be, um, be yourself, be confident, uh, don't do things that um, don't fit into other people's world and, you know, don't, don't force yourself on that. And of course, when you're dealing with a bunch of guys, uh, you have to know your limits. Okay. I, uh, yeah. I, I suddenly have a question to ask. Because uh, I feel like sometimes guys, when they talk, right, if you are talking with a bunch of guys, they're sort of like talking something that for me, I feel offended, but they don't realize it. Should I like say it out or what? Or I keep it to myself? Because sometimes you know guys <laughs> that usually talk things that make me feel offended. <laughs> I tell you what, I still have this with my husband. <laughs> so this is like forever. It will happen forever. So you, you just, whether you want to learn how to let go or not, so, or if you get really angry, right? It's the one that, you know, make yourself difficult is yourself. 
So you just let go and then uh, to me it's let go because it's not just your guy friends. Eventually, if you get married, right, you have a husband that is behaving in such a way. Um, I get this all this well from my husband. So instead of like, I get super angry at him, I just let go. Then I just move on, right? And why, why should I take care? You know, it's, it's, very, it's not important to me. Uh, why should I get angry? I should get angry on the better, uh, other better things than, you know, your, your silly comments or whatsoever. You just have to think, guys and women, we are different. Just remember the boxes things. Okay. okay. They wouldn't have, when we say, when we focus on one box, that they are focusing on one box, they probably say something just on that box A. But for us, that we are already in box E, F, G, and then we are, we will be questioning, why are you saying this? I don't like it. And to them, we said, I don't know what you are talking about. Okay, that's the difference of like mindset between me and it's female. Correct. A lot of things they have to move on. But I also found that at the same time, um, we are celebrating us. We are celebrating the International Women's Day. Um, I think for women, we have the luxury in terms of emotionals. Uh, it's okay for women to cry, right? If you're not happy, we just have tears, we cry. It's People will see that it is normal for women to cry, but uh, if you want a man to cry, especially in this Asian context, it takes, I don't know, they'll probably hide in the corners and you know, have one drop of tears. Um, to me, is yes, we are celebrating International Women Days, but at least we have to also uh, keep reminding ourselves on the gender equalities, um, we are equals. Um, the the only things that, uh, of course, we are different biologically. Um, the only things that, because we think differently uh, in terms of the the brain differences, we shouldn't. We, we should respect each other on how we think, and this will definitely help us to communicate better in work, um, and not keep. Um, shouting on the words lady first or lady priority. I think all this should be metric based. Um, and I mean, give also a chance for the guys. Um, um, it's to me, it's, uh, it's, it shouldn't be much of uh, having the priority as a lady is taking that advantage. But I think we should always uh, respect each other no matter what you do. And this effect will be very sustainable in your career in the future. True, true. Yeah, rather than leveraging on, you know, women's first, women's uh, privilege. I think to me is we just have to respect each other I think, and leverage on others' um, um, advantages and it will make us a very good team to work together. Yeah. That will make you angry for sure, forever. <laughs> I, I mean, like, they, their words sometimes make me feel like they don't respect girls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But I don't know, is it I'm too sensitive? Because like uh, others, my colleagues, other female colleagues, they don't feel anything. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's like, it's okay. Like, I already like, let go. Just that you I have to let go. La. Yeah, you have to cycle. I have this uh, from my colleagues, uh, from my husband, from my son, you know. Sometimes my son will say, mommy, you are so fat. But hey, they're so fat words. Uh, it's like I was so sensitive, you know, can cause me not to eat for a day or two. But then if you don't let go, all this emotional side effect, you are the one who face the consequences, not them. They will be, yeah, okay, I'm going to watch my Netflix. So you have to be fair to yourself, make yourself happy, and that should be the priority that getting angry. Okay, okay. Thank you, Karen. It's a very nice topic. So what about others? You do get upset as well. I'm actually quite curious on what the guy said that made me didn't offend it. Um, but yeah, I guess we face this like almost like most of the time like, as ladies actually. But actually I do have one question for Karen. Um, how did, what's the difference like in while working, right? What's the difference being like a girl in like, let's just say a full team of boys or okay? Because if I'm not mistaken, last night, I just like had more boys than girls. So how do you feel like being like the only girl there? Mm, I, I I think you should ask Tila about these questions, how you feel like, you know, having a girl in the team. Um, but to me, I don't really see that against, um, I don't really, uh, uh, yeah, I know you're a guy, I 
it's just a matter of a little bit mindful, like understand how guys think, right? Uh, eventually, what you really want to gain from the office or from your workplace is the objective that you want to achieve. And in the middle of the journey, you get a lot of funny things happen, conflict, which is okay. But to me, it's no matter you're female or male, to me, it's the same. Uh, what is important is what are the objectives that you want to achieve as a team and how can we work together? Um, guy, it's, uh, how to say that? Of course, not all guys, but most of the guys, they are very uh, big picture driven. Yeah, and girls are very details, right? And sometimes it's very sensitive. And what makes a good team is really how to put, uh, if you have a girls who are very detailed and sensitive, then let her do something that, um, um, that allow her to spend more um, time in picking up the details. If you have a guy who are very good in, uh, let's say a big picture, then maybe he can, you know, give you a general ideas. So it's it's working in a team. If you ask me, no matter you are a girl or, or, or female or male, it's important to know everyone's strengths and weaknesses rather than say you are a girl, you do this; you are a boy, you do this. So this is where I think um, I'm coming from in the team, lah. I must say, I like team is quite balanced everywhere. We always leverage on each other's strengths here and there, which make us a very complete team. Yeah. 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 So we are coming to an end of the town hall, but then, oh, Yanmi, you have a question for Karen? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I decided yeah. to ask this last minutely. So I was thinking, so eventually a uh, woman will come to a time if you are decided to, uh, uh, you know, build a family and then have babies and things like that, right? Then in the midst of the pregnancy period where you have to dismiss yourself on a working space for a few months, then on maternity leave and stuff like that. And um, how, how do you cope with being in an environment that uh, guys are more dominating than girls? And then, like, uh, will it worries you where if you are MIA for a few months, right, then uh, people will start taking over your uh, commitments or, um, you know, they will... Yeah, things, things like that. If I say no, it's a lie. I'm lying if I say no. I just want to be very honest to you. Yes, I I um, I did face the, um, the experience of having myself very worried on what if I get pregnant, right? And what if I go through the maternity leave of two, three months? And what if, what happens if I come back? Um, I, I, I did have the thoughts before. Um, I think this is also very general. Um, it happens to all females um, who are working. Um, at one point, I even have the imaginations of taking a calculator and this down. How, how, when I want to get married, I, I got married at 27 and I got my first baby at uh, when I was 30 years old. And I, I, when I returned to the office after the pregnancy or throughout the nine months when I worked in the office, um, I did feel that you know the progress is a little bit slow and um, you know I have all the morning sickness from um, the first no I think the second month onwards all the way to the nine months I just feel like you know when I look at uh, my work I just feel like throwing out every day it's, it's very hard and it got me a little bit depressed you know how to catch up with the, um, the other colleagues not just the guys or the, it's generally other colleagues but I found that it doesn't affect much, you know, after the first pregnancy. In fact, after, you know, three months returning to work, every, everything was on track and I got promotions within a year. And that doesn't really tell, like, you know, it, it's a lot of, you get a lot of worry and it might be unnecessary, but if you are ready to do that planning, you know what happens, you prepare yourself, and that would be more important as a so-called risk mitigation of losing your job or whatsoever. Um, I think it's you. You got to understand that you you have the worst case scenario. If you go back to the office, uh, you will be slowed down. But what are the things that you really want to do to overcome the situations? Um, bear in mind when you have baby, also. Uh, the time is upside down, you know, especially you don't get sleep, but you just have to tahan and go lah. 
you get probably a few gray hair, but after that, this is a life cycle. And it's very important also to communicate to your spouse. You're working as a team and you should not, you know, just tahan in a way by, you know, getting, doing things by yourself and to uh, prove that you are still worth the value. Um, maybe it's also taking a chance here to share with everyone that sometimes what your body can take is different from what your mind can take. Um, you, if you think that, um, I can do this, but you get a lot of health implications. Um, I see a lot of my female colleagues um, who are very serious in their work and they get a lot of stress to go through the family stress. They don't really get a chance to rest. You know, they are like 24 seven working very hard and um, working very hard for the family and forgot about themselves, but they are the one who suffer from the health implications like, you know, the breast cancer. And you, you just want to, um, keep reminding yourself that yes, I'm a female, I'm multitask, but I need also my me time. Um, I need to also play my phone. I need to go shopping, spend money. Um, I need to love myself before I'm able to love others. And this is one of the very important message that you have to keep telling yourself and communicate to others. Um, it's okay to so, you know, meet your friends, uh, gossiping and you know, talking about all the men or whatsoever. It's okay. And, and, as long as you get some fun, you know, and then you don't keep everything within yourself. You have to, the, the mental health is very important. Talk to people, uh, always talk to people. Um, the more you think, the more complicated it will be. And you are the one who will be getting the consequences from your own health. Thank you so much for the insights, Karen. Uh, oh, we still has another question. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, all right. Hello, Karen. Um, hey. So you see, you moved from a role as a microbiologist and then to working in uh, marketing and then to now um, in ventures and um, innovations. So I was wondering, like, if you can share a little bit about your um, biggest regrets, like, as a minority um, during these transitions. Biggest regrets. Um. I'm a very strange person in the way that I don't regret on what I have been um, embarked on. Uh, to me, it's if I started something, I will do it properly. Um, I won't get regrets. Uh, the regrets happen on very minor issue. Like, you know, if I go to a shopping mall, I didn't manage to get that at a cheaper price. I got really angry and regrets. And that happens. But um, I think for me, it's, I went through a different journey. Um, every of the journey, the different role that I have been involving, it's very tough because it's it's not about what I have studied. It's not about what I have been um, um, doing before that. I don't have experience. Everything is to learn from scratch. Um, but I love that experience of doing things from scratch because I know I love doing things from scratch. I know I don't like a routine job. I don't like working in the lab. So ask yourself, right, who you are. Do you are you something? Are you someone who really do things like that structurals, or are you someone who really like uh, challenges, doing different things every day, or are you something that uh, uh, would prefer to refer to a manual when you are fixing something, or are you someone who are usually throw away the manual uh, while fixing a cabinet and exploring where are the screw, where to put the screw and et cetera. You have to ask yourself, what sort of person you like? And then choose the thing that you want to work with rather than you choose first, then only you discover that you don't like it. To me, it's, uh, I know who, what I want and um, I talk to a lot of people. Uh, in fact, I'm a little bit lucky in the way that I have mentors. I have a very good uh, female mentors that um, guide me through. Um, and it's not just one, um, it's quite a number of them. Um, and I gain insight from uh, all these mentors who are not just, um, it's a friends who are not just, you know, gossiping, but uh, it gives you a lot of insight on um, it's all working female. And I'll probably see that is that would be important for all the young ladies here as well. All right, thank you. I do have a regret uh, as, as far as I, I told you, uh, but that's on the personal side. I don't mind sharing with all of you, right? I, I spoke about uh, what your, 
your mental strength can overcome is different from what your body can overcome. And I probably, you know, after delivering my first kid, I was very much in, involved in my work. I was promoted. I got very gung-ho with all the new opportunities, new departments, new team. The team was expanding and um, everything was very good. And my, my career was like that. Um, and I have lots of opportunities um, going everywhere. And I discovered that I got pregnant and I thought, as you can know, life goes on. But I didn't, didn't know what happened when the baby was 30 weeks old. Uh, I had, a, what do you call that, a, a premature delivery and the baby was extremely small. Um, the doctors was trying to gauge whether I have any special um, conditions like hypertensions or infections that cause the premature delivery. But eventually they came and told me that it's actually my lifestyle. Um, it's uh, what it's again that I think I can handle. I think I can handle, but my body is giving the sign that no, sorry, you can't handle. So that's the reason why I keep uh, emphasize to all ladies here: love yourself first. Don't be uh, like you know. Um, really look into what your body, your body and your mind is different. You have a very strong mental strength, but your body most of the time cannot handle that. And uh, we are a lot of there's a lot of funny hormones in our body, and we just have to be very mindful on where is the limit and uh, where we should, what we should do in the future. Okay. Thank you so much for all the advice. So I think Yanmi has one final question. Yep. Yeah, so sorry uh, to come a bit of time. Uh, no, I have time for uh, all the young ladies here. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, uh, top up with the stories that you shared just now, right? Um, it resonates me a bit where I also come from a different, totally different background where I was from a marine science background. Oh. And, yeah, I didn't choose to uh, venture into that part. Instead, I go to more like an analyst and marketing part. And uh, same because uh, I know what I want in the future, but um, mm. the thing that strikes me, right, is like sometimes uh, I felt a bit um, left behind compared to those who are already in the industry, like uh, business. I mean, they already started studying business and marketing since degree, right? And then they move on to this one. But um, compared to me, it's like totally from an entirely science mindset changing to a business mindset comes with creativity and stuff like that. Sometimes I feel like... Um, the timeline that I give to myself is the, a little bit too harsh, but at the same time, I'm so very worried that I cannot, you know, um, how to say, follow other people's uh, timeline and then meet uh, the boss's expectation. Then, so for you, right, uh, when you are changing from microbiology all the way to uh, marketing, which are totally different environment, working environment, how do you cope with the mindset shifting? Oh, um, this is a very interesting um, uh, question. When I was in r and I can tell you how much I hate marketing team. Because I really think that I cannot speak to them, right? I, I have just have no idea. Do you really understand what is this product or not? Um, they will come to you with crazy idea. And you know, the, the next thing is, I really you know, look at them and I, do you understand what you are talking about? You know how much I hate them <laughs> when I was a researcher. And when I was um, tasked to join the marketing team, then I realized that you know it's actually um, you can imagine you can you can imagine that your brain is very unique. Uh, you you have the left and the right hemisphere, right? This is a little bit scientific, but um, if you don't mind me explaining, your left brain is very analytical and structured, and this is where the scientists most of the scientists uh, belongs to, whereas your right brain. It's very conceptual and very social. You know, those people, marketing people, uh, you speak to them, they, can, they, can, they cannot stop speak, talking and then they have a lot of things to talk because they are very conceptual and they are very social people. So right now, Yan Ming, you are in the situations, you started your career as a very um, technical details. You probably fall into that quadrant, right, of uh, very analytical and um, structure, structural. And to you, if you want to do anything, you must follow the process step by step. And then for marketing, they're probably into that quadrant. You want to do it, straight away do it. They won't, then you, you pick out the step and then you are doing. So it's, it's definitely a, a, a struggle because you probably think that, how come I'm like that and they are like that? I cannot achieve what the expectation of the other people. You, you have to really think about 
do you do they have the skill set that is that you you have currently or not? They don't. They don't. But you are picking up what they are learning, what they are what they are having, which is the conceptual part. And you have to understand how they think, and you have to combine the both worlds, and you definitely have the advantage to progress. If you keep asking yourself, uh, cannot uh, be a different now, cannot one, uh, cannot one, uh, it then cannot uh, then you'll be um, just wearing the GSC t-shirt, hello dot cannot, right? But if you really think about, okay, I'm I'm trained to think this way, and I know my job requirements want me to think that way, and how can I combine the, the best of the both sides? And I tell you, you have advantage. Those that have the both thinking of those different mindsets, you have the advantage to progress. At least you don't, it's very hard for you to pick up the, the new skill for the first two years, but you don't give up. It's very, as long as you can combine the both work, you have the advantage compared to other people. So start is very difficult, but once you grab it, it's not difficult anymore. You have the advantage, I mean, don't give up. <laughs> Trying very hard to. Yeah, Thank the, you, the, the front part is very difficult. Yeah, I, I just remember I had been telling my uh, marketing colleagues until right now, you are really hit you when you all come to the R&D department. The moment they push the door, I look at them. Yeah, what do you want again? <laughs> Not that kind of uh, attitude. Okay, thank you, Karen. Oh, Karen, I hope you do not feel that way when I push the door. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I, I guess what I'm, 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 I think it's it's good if you want to work in an organization, especially or to lead a teams, right? You really need to understand the different um, talk process. Um, you have to understand how R and D people behave, how a, a programmer behave, how marketing or business development be, people behave, and leverage on each other's strengths to really help to um, uh, achieve the objective. Uh, it's very hard for you to learn. Uh, but as long as you don't give up, you definitely stand an advantage. Thank you so much, Karen, for all your advice. Uh, we actually exceeded the time for almost 15 minutes. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. And I'd like to thank Karen. Uh, any, any more burning yeah. questions before we leave oh, yes. the last one? Anyone? Last question. Did I ask one question? <laughs> okay. So, like, how, how do you choose between your passion and practical? Passion for, and practical. Yeah, what do you for mean? Uh? Like for career, right? There's some job that you like it, but it's like not very practical. You know, like in realistic, like, realistically, it's not very practical, but it's your passion. What is your passion, uh, Yilin? Uh, I actually wanted to study music ah okay yeah but now i feel like it's not so practical compared to it uh it's as a matter of both la. if you are passionate you you need to work on something there are passions uh, in order to drive to drive yourself to the greater heights um, and i seriously think it can also help you to um drive your passion in music as well. Looking into the music ventures, right? Last year, especially um, when we have all these MCO, we cannot go to class. And then we have this, um, what do you call it? This music um, um, apps that's coming out and all the families, all the young children are using that to learn piano. It's, it's about combining your passions and you definitely need something that you're passionate about and leverage on your skill sets. Um, all this, IT is definitely a skill set, but if you have a passion, then you have to use your skill sets to really work on something that you are passionate about. God knows one day you can be like a virtual music um, teacher or bots. When I key in, a, a, I play a guitar and then this bot can tell me that, you know, what is the exact problems. You wouldn't know that. And this is driving your passion as well. Of course, whether can cherry makan or not, then, um, well, my time, uh, my I, I got a I got a scholarship in archaeology. You, you can oh. probably see, you know, in my Sajara, my SBM, right, my uh, form four, form five, all this essay, I have never scored less than ninety. 
for my sejarah. Sejarah is very easy to me. And I got a I got an archaeology uh, scholarship from the University of Virginia in US. And the first thing I was so happy, you know, I showed my dad. And then my dad looked at me, so what can you do in Malaysia? Then I look at that, yeah, what can I do in Malaysia? <laughs> And this is about this. This question will come about passions and practical. You have to really ask. Uh, okay, my passion is sejarah, but can I cari makan or not? It's probably not something that I want to do in the future. Right? I don't want to. I don't want to speak to the to the mummies and also all the dead artifacts. I'm not keen into doing that. But I know that I like people, and therefore I'm here today, right? Dealing with innovation, and innovation is about people, it's about the human behavior. So you, you have to understand what is your passions, and with the skill set that you gain, then it helps to complement and to drive your um, career further or to come up with some things that really keep you going when you open your eyes. I'm going to do that rather than shits. I don't, I just I just want to sleep and I don't want to do anything today. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Okay, okay. good to see everyone. Um, um, yeah, I, I really like to um, speak to all of you and uh, hopefully next time we can hear more from Zarina uh, Bochu and also um, uh, Wei San, we, we did, um, I did have a chance to speak to you and everyone that you know you joined the sessions today. So thank you so much for joining us. And um, actually I would like to remind you guys that everyone here, you guys are always powerful, beautiful, and also brilliant in your own ways. So let's strive and overcome the challenges that comes our way because we just can. So yes. thank you so much. Let and go of the negative comments. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. All right. It's good thank to see you. everyone. Take care and all the best. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lynn, for organizing this. Thank you, Karen. Bye.